We are back to my old faithful film spot in front of the staircase of death. If this is your first time watching my content, you won't recognize this at all since you haven't seen any of my old videos. So welcome to you. But to the long-term subscribers, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the five reasons why your back isn't growing and what to do about it. Reason number one is grip and elbow path. So regardless of what exercise you're doing, the grip that you use will dictate your elbow position, which will then dictate which part of your back you're emphasizing. Most people don't really take this into consideration and they wind up overdoing exercises for one portion of the back, such as the upper back or the rear delts, and not doing enough volume for their actual lats. If you want a complete back with even development, you need to know these differences. Taking a neutral to a slightly supinated or palms up grip will bias your elbows being tucked into your sides. This is the better position for your lat muscles, and as such you should avoid taking your elbows too far behind your torso, as that will shift the work off your lats. If you take a roughly 45 degree grip like this, that will allow your elbows to track at a similar angle, which usually allows for the greatest range of motion for your elbows to travel behind your torso, which is perfect for the rear delts. Finally, going higher than this into more of a palms down position pulls your elbows out to the sides more, which is a great position for your upper back muscles, as it allows for more freedom of motion at the shoulder blades. So focus on squeezing your shoulder blades back together in the peak contraction on these exercises and lean them round forwards in the stretch position. Reason number two is relying too much on this V handle. This is one of the most common grips you'll find in the gym on pieces like pull downs and cable rows. And it's pretty garbage. When your hands are super close like this, it limits your ability to be able to pull your elbows back unless you have a really narrow frame. It might be fine if you're actually trying to limit the range of motion for your elbows to travel for your lats instead of your rear delts or upper back, but it's still going to be too narrow for you to comfortably pull back for the most part. So a simple solution is to grab a wider handle or single pulley attachments, and if you don't have either, try looping a couple of stirrup handles across a bar for a really simple, convenient option. Reason number three is letting your grip strength hold you back on your pulling exercises. For some reason, a lot of people demonize the use of lifting straps. But we need to remember here, when we're doing most of what we do in the gym, we're trying to train our back or our shoulders or our legs, if you're doing something like deadlifts or dumbbell lunges. We're not trying to train our grip. If you want to work on your grip, there are far better exercises to choose than rows or pull downs or even deadlifts. So while you're doing back training, make it back training by using straps when you need them. Otherwise, you'll find your grip strength failing well before your back, especially towards the end of a workout when you need your grip strength the most. Reason number four is using too much momentum. I'm sure I've all seen it before. Guys loading up a bunch of plates on a barbell and doing more of a standing, slightly bent over, shrug, body dip, jerk kind of thing instead of barbell rows. Or stacking out the pull down or cable row and having some sort of epileptic fit on the machine whilst the bar moves all of about two inches. They might even have a big back, but keep in mind, even if they do have good results, they got those results in spite of what they were doing, not because of what they were doing. On all back exercises especially, I emphasize all four portions of the lift. Not just the lift portion itself, but the squeeze at the top of the rep, a deliberate slow eccentric or lowering phase across about three to five seconds, and depending on the exercise, I might even add in extra pause in the stretch position as well. It's not about moving the most weight possible in the gym, it's about actually lifting that weight with your muscles at a pace that allows that load to create tension across your muscles. So that's four reasons. What do you think so far? Have you made any of these mistakes or am I missing anything? Drop me a comment below to let me know what you think. And if you haven't yet, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. You'll be supporting the creation of more free content just like this and you'll stay up to date with everything that I do right on here. All right, so reason number five why your back isn't growing is because you rely too much on free weights. It sounds like blasphemy, but the fact is there are certain benefits to using machines that you just can't get from free weight motions like chin-ups and barbell rows. First, those movements have a lot of instability. You're supporting yourself in space, so as you start to fatigue, you're going to use other muscle groups to compensate and take work away from your back. But secondly, and probably most importantly, is that it's extremely hard to train your back muscles through their entire range of motion without the use of machines. Let me ask you this, where is a squat motion the hardest? 
the top of the squat when you're standing up straight, or the bottom when your leg muscles are all stretched out. It's the bottom. What about the bench press? It's the same deal. It's at the bottom of the bench press where your chest muscles are all stretched out. What about most back exercises like your rows and chin-ups? They're hardest at the top of the exercise where the muscles aren't stretched out. You could make the argument for pullovers being an exercise that's hardest at the bottom or that stretch position, but you really struggle to load them up enough to really challenge your back muscles. And that still misses the upper back muscles completely. And this is why machines are so important. Depending on the machine or how you use it, they can allow you to make the bottom position much harder than the top position. This is usually a very undertrained range of motion for the back, so don't be surprised if you're extremely weak here to begin with. But once you get good at it, you'll really start to see your back development changing for the better. All right, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something useful. If you have anything to add, drop me a comment below and let me know if you have any other questions at all. And if you wanna use any of my programs, use the link in the description to get your free trial to Gamba Room Method, which is my training and education platform that'll give you access to all of my programs, macro calculator, and so much more. And I'll see you all next time.